it's been rocketing, rocketing. It's been rocketing. Oh, maybe I can't say that word. Hey everyone, my name is Sarah Moore and we're here in Squamish, BC. Back in March, the International Olympic Committee announced that the Olympics were gonna be postponed for a whole year. That meant that brands like Specialized were gonna have to wait another year to put bikes like this new Epic to the ultimate test. That is, until we decided to do the Pink Bike XC Field Test. Specialized claims that that size medium 12M frame now weighs as little as 1,869 grams. Our size medium test bike is the lightest one that we have here at 21.2 pounds. That's set up with control tires, no pedals, but that does include the integrated power meter as well as the SWAT tool that is in the steer tube. There's also space for two water bottles on all sizes of frame, except for the extra small. Now let's talk about geometry, because that's obviously the big story with this new Epic. It has a 67 and a half degree head tube angle and a 75 and a half degree effective seat tube angle, which makes it ready to tackle some challenging terrain. The Epic now has 433 millimeter chain stays across all sizes. I'm 5'7", I'm riding a size medium. That now has a 445 millimeter reach, which is 12 millimeters longer than the previous generation. The bottom bracket is also something that Specialized has revised. They've dropped it by nine millimeters and the wheelbase is now 1,148 millimeters long. Now let's talk about suspension. The Epic uses Specialized brain technology and a single pivot design. The brain on the Epic fork and shock has a sprung brass inertia valve, which is designed to deliver a firm pedaling platform until it encounters a bump, in which case it will open up the shock to allow it to absorb that bump. Theoretically, it can tell whether an input comes from the rider or whether it comes from the train. The location of the brain is still at the rear axle, but the tune has been changed, so it's now designed to have a firmer pedaling platform and to give a more natural, smoother feeling. There's no need for a bar-mounted lockout with that brain, and so the handlebar is about as clean as you can get with just one axis shifter on it. Our test bike came with a 100 millimeter RockShox SID fork, which is equipped with specialized brain internals, and a SID Lux rear shock. There are no aluminum models of this race bike and it starts at $5,925 and goes all the way up to $11,525. If you buy the S-Works frame, that comes with a brain shock and fork and that retails for $5,025. For this test, we've got the S-Works Epic, which is the no expenses spared version of the bike. And for that, you'll get SRAM's Axis drivetrain, a cork power meter, Roval's 1200 gram wheels and level ultimate brakes. So that's enough about the details. What you really wanna know is how it rides out on the trails. All right, Sarah, tell me how you set up this racy red Epic of yours. So I use the recommended settings yep. from the manufacturer and we put on our control tires of like course. we did on all the bikes. There's same pressures. Control tires, same pressures across the board to mm -hmm. eliminate that factor. And then there's brain on this bike. Yep. So I tried all the different settings on it from the firmest to the most open. Um, and I settled kind of on the closer side to open. So that yep. kind of number two setting. You know, it feels like you're in a really efficient position. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, it does have like a little bit of a slacker head tube angle, which you really notice on those slow speed handling. Yep. You know, on that Trek Super Caliber, there was that corner that I could get every right. single time. Specialized Epic, you know, not every single time. You definitely had to go a little bit wider and then cut in. And, you know, I did get used to it and I was able to do it, but you did have to just anticipate it a little bit more. Right. So if you were in a race and, you know, you're mass start, you're trying to cut those inside lines, might be a little bit more difficult on, on a bike like this. Right. Now, I wanted to ask you about another section on the trail. I, mm -hmm. You're very familiar with this section. There was yep. a part, a big hole, and faced with a big wall. It was super wet. And then these roots splayed across it that you hit going not fast not enough. Not fast at all, yeah. yeah. To carry <laughs> speed up it. And it's a, it's a section that really tests the bike traction. What were your results there? Yeah, so we went back to back with a couple other bikes and I was getting pretty frustrated on the Canyon Lux. Yes. And so I was like, you know what? I know I can do this climb. Maybe it's just the bike. I got on the Specialized Epic and first try, no problem. So just not just right up first there. try though. I mean, you did it again and again and again and again on this bike. If you compare it to something like the Cannondale Scalpel, it feels more efficient when you're riding. It feels kind of like you're more poppy, more sporty. Mm -hmm. It's like got more go to it. Yeah. But yeah. if you compare it to something like the Canyon Lux, when you go onto like a gravel road climb, that Canyon Lux just feels like you can just, you know, it doesn't 
feel like it has suspension, whereas right. the Specialized kind of hits that middle ground where it feels really efficient and it has good traction. So I have the Epic Evo with the standard Sid Lux shock. Obviously it's brainless, there's no brain on there. Uh, and it's very good over the small bumps, very compliant. What's the deal with the brain suspension? Does that take away some compliance or does it feel good over the small stuff? It feels great over the small stuff. I almost like when I was going back to back with, you know, the Trek Super Caliber, which only has 60 millimeters of travel mm -hmm. or with the Canyon Lux, which I said, you know, it's not doing a lot with its 100 millimeters of travel. It was almost a relief to get on this bike because your hands just don't get as tired because mm -hmm. you're, you know, going over these small bumps and it, it does absorb them and it, it feels really good. So you're coming down a rooty section of trail. You come over that on the Cannondale. You get off, you go back up and you ride back down it on the Specialized with the brain in the middle setting. Does that suspension work? Is it opening and does it absorb those bumps and let the rear end track the ground? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it does take a bit getting, of getting used to, like I said, but at the same time, it, it definitely engages and it has good traction on the downhills. It doesn't feel like, you know, it's engaging at the last moment or after you've gone across yeah, the bump, like late. somehow it does engage before you would feel it. You mentioned a couple times that it did feel a little strange compared to a more traditional suspension system that doesn't have that inertia valve in there. What, what do you think you were feeling? Yeah. What was going on? It was a bit difficult going, you know, back and forth between uh, three other bikes and the Specialized with the Brain. Mm -hmm. um, if you had been riding the Brain for a long time, obviously you would get used to it. But when you're going back and forth, you definitely feel that little engagement and... What, I'm gonna stop you there. What is that feel though? What are you feeling through your feet? You know, I don't wanna use the word clunk cause it's like more delicate than a clunk, mm -hmm. but it, it's you, it's like a, a movement in your fork. Like it, at first I yeah. thought something was loose. The you brain know? and the fork and the yeah. brain and the shock. And the brain and the shock. This bike had the fastest ascending time. No dropper post. No dropper post. Uh, yeah, it was just, you know, really confidence inspiring on the downhills. Mm -hmm. And on the overall time lap, it tied for second place. So it tied with the Trek Super Caliber. Okay. We had the brain in one of the more open settings for this, you mm -hmm. know, try to keep things consistent. We didn't use the lockout on any of the other bikes. So yep. didn't put the brain in full firm setting here either. And then for the efficiency test, it was second place. And that was with the brain in the middle setting as well. Uh, I think it was uh, four seconds behind the Canyon, uh, but still very quick. All right, on to components next. And this being the S-Works bike, there's a lot of really fancy stuff to talk about, including a power meter crank set. Yeah, the bike comes out of the box with a fork power meter crank set. Talk about being race ready, eh? Yeah, I mean, most racers are gonna be training with power if you're right. at all serious. And yep. so why not have it out of the box? And then, yeah, the Axis drivetrain was great. Shifting was flawless mm -hmm. and- uh, so You push a button and it happens, right? It's, it's awesome, done. yeah. It's like, you don't wanna think. And Zero thinking. If you wanna switch the way that it shifts, you can do that in the app too. Or if yep. you want it to shift two or three, like, yep. yeah, it's awesome. All right, on to pros and cons. As usual, tell me what you like. That modern geometry mm -hmm. makes the descents a lot more fun, a lot more forgiving. And then it has the brain, which is awesome if you don't wanna have to worry about locking out your bike. I mean, when you're you're not yet breathing really hard, you don't wanna have to worry about, you know, locking or unlocking your suspension. Like how many times have you You just dropped, never have to think about it. How many times have you dropped into a descent and being like, oh no, now it's too late, I can't unlock it. Almost I never keep because my hands on the I handlebar. refuse to use lockout <laughs> levers. Right, right, right. But I see that happen all the time yeah, out there. Yeah. People drop in, especially during racing, you drop in, you forget your bike is locked out. and mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, that's, that's definitely good. a great thing that the brain right. is your brain when you're tired. Let's talk about cons and let's continue on with that brain suspension. Yeah, so I, I wish it didn't make any noise or you didn't feel it. It definitely feels that you engage it. Um, you know, maybe brain 6.0 or something will <laughs> not have that feeling anymore. And the firmer yeah. the setting you go, the more you feel it. So exactly. yeah, the more efficient your bike is, the more you feel it. So it's kind of that trade off. Who is this? 
fancy red bike for? And I bet I know the answer. It's gonna be for a racer, like right. for a technical cross country course, like where you need to be able to anticipate uh, the downhills and not, you know, you don't wanna be kind of mm -hmm. terrified of every downhill that you come into. This is a great bike. It seems to me that the canyon and the track, they're better suited to less forgiving courses, mm -hmm. where the Cannondale seems a little more forgiving on the suspension front, mm -hmm. so it, could, it takes less out of you. Where does this sit relative to those bikes? Yeah, so I mean, any cross country race that you are gonna do, whether it's on smoother terrain or it's on more technical terrain, I think mm -hmm. it's quite a versatile cross country bike and that 100 millimeters can either be, you know, as firm or as active as you want it to be. So right. um, yeah, I think it's a great option for anybody who is, you know, serious about cross country racing. All right, there you go. There is Specialized all new Epic race bike. Speaking of that, I think we should probably go do an Epic ride on our two Epics, Definitely right? gonna be wearing spandex for this one. 100%. Stay tuned for more video reviews and roundtable discussions from the cross-country field test.